Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today is very exciting because I'm actually going to be trying some TT scale models for the first ever time. <music> TT scale is 1 to 120 scale, which is just over half of 00 scale, that's 1 to 76. That's the sort of model I usually show on this channel. And just recently, over the past few months, Hornby have been really working hard to reintroduce TT to the UK. They've announced a massive range of new products, a new track system, loads of locos, rolling stock buildings, and to date, for the first time, I'm going to be taking a look at some of that stuff with a train set. It is this one. Brand new train set, just been released this week. It is called the Easterner train set, and inside is the debut of Hornby's all new A4 in TT scale. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that thing turned out. The first thing to notice is the size of this packaging. This is dramatically smaller than the traditional Hornby train set packaging in 00 scale. And frankly, we've heard a lot about the advantages of TT scale. Firstly, it is a lot smaller and more convenient than 00 scale. It's slightly cheaper, more affordable than 00 scale as well. And it's more realistic than 00 scale in the sense that the gauge of the track is actually in proportion to the scale of the models, unlike 00, where we actually run on HO track, of course, which is too small. But what I want to get from this is whether or not TT can actually stand up to 00 scale. Is it as good in terms of detail? Is it as good in terms of performance? I'm not interested in what Hornby or what anybody else has to say on that matter. This is really something I want to see for myself. Ultimately, I want to know, is this as fun to use as 00? Is it still magical like 00 is? Well, you're invited to find out with me today. Now this is quite an expensive set, having said all that about TT being affordable. It is £194.49 on Hornby.com, and like all of Hornby's TT range, it is currently exclusive to Hornby.com, that is the only place you can get it. However, if you're part of Hornby's TT Club, you can get 15% off any TT item. I joined that club because it was free, and I managed to get this set for around £165. So, I think if this was double O, I would consider that a good deal. I would say that was good value. Here in TT, I have no idea. So, really looking forward to this. Let's jump in. Let's find out whether it is worth our time and our money. Let's see. All right, well, let's start figuring out then what it is you get for your money. So you can see on the front of the box the loco we get. This is an A4, William Whitelaw, and the three coaches. If you'd like to pick up this set, it is TT1002M. This is only the second TT set released. It is DCC ready, according to the box. So there's a decoder socket inside the loco. I think Hornby said these were next 18s. I'm not entirely sure now, so we'll have to double check. I think we'll see more of what's inside if I flip this over. So again, you can see we've got the locomotive there in the BR green. We've got three coaches and of course a good load of track. And I believe it is this circuit here with a set of points and a siding that comes in the set. So again, if this was a double O set, I'd be saying that's great. The siding makes things a lot more interesting. It gives you some opportunity in terms of shunting and also some space for expansion too. So yeah, I mean, on the box, it seems like a good set. If this was double O, I'd be quite impressed with it for the money. But let's get in and let's see what this TT stuff is actually like. I've seen it at the exhibitions, I've seen it on Hornby's YouTube channel, but I have never held any of this stuff in my hands yet, and I'm really, really eager and curious to do so. So here we go. Let's pull out what I assume is going to be a tray. Oh no, it's like a box. Okay, interesting. How exciting and unusual. How does this work? Oh yeah, oh wow. Cool. So, what have we got inside? Well, I'm first of all very glad to see that the loco is not just slung into this cardboard. It is properly boxed up inside a proper blister pack, 
which should do a good job of protecting it and it also suggests that there is some detail to protect on this loco wow it really is tiny isn't it right well let's start with the loco this is what i'm most interested in i think so let's pull it out gosh i have never opened a blister pack this small before Blimey, I, I literally have no idea what this loco is going to be like. Is it connected to the tender? Is it actually going to be detailed? Not a clue. Right. Exciting. Reveal. There we go. Hornby's TTA4. And I've got to say, the finish looks great. Yeah, it's a beautiful finish. It looks like the safety valves there might be real metal. For me, these are really good signs. I, yeah, the size is, I think it's smaller than I expected. This is more what I imagined N-Scale to be like. Although I should point out this is larger than N-Scale. People have been asking that in previous videos. It is not N-Scale. It is larger than that. Right, are they connected? Yeah, they're connected. All right, here we go. So, in terms of the weight, yeah, it is relatively light, as you'd expect. It doesn't feel dramatically light for the size of the thing, though. Obviously, there's not a huge amount of room in here for a massive die-cast chassis as there is in 00. So I think it's important to sort of change the way we think about these models because they are so much smaller. We will, of course, have a much closer look at the details in just a second, but at a glance, they do look good, don't they? The decoration looks superb, even at this smaller scale. Looks like it's got most of the detail that you would see on 00 gauge models. Um, whether that is true up close is yet to be seen. We'll try and figure that out. But yeah, ultimately, it feels like a fairly good quality little loco. It doesn't look like a cheap toy. And it's a little bit more than I would usually expect out of a Hornby train set. So really excited to see how this thing turns out. Can't wait to get it running. So I'm going to put that back on here. And we'll talk more about that later on. Can't wait to see what makes it tick mechanically as well. And let's start having a look at some of the coaches. So we'll start with this one because this one's sort of open already. Here we go. Yeah, this looks lovely. It just looks like a 00 scale coach. You've got all of the details that you'd expect to see on a 00 coach, except it's nearly half the size. We've still got metal wheels, which are really, really good. Metal axles and everything. That was one thing I was wondering about. You can see we've got decent underframe as well. Yeah, it's got all of the glazing. It's still got the print work on the windows. There's still an interior as well. Yeah, that looks fine, doesn't it? The quality of the paint is good as well. I like the finish on this stuff. So that's the first class coach, Eastern Region. Let's have a look at the brake then. Let's pull this out. It's probably going to be largely similar, but I just want to look at as much of this stuff as I possibly can to try and form a full opinion on it. Yeah, same sort of quality and detail. It looks like a lot of the body detail is sort of moulded on. I suppose you'd expect things like the grab rails to be separately fitted in double O, but perfectly understandable, I suppose, that they are moulded here in TT. Otherwise, they'd be a little chunky, wouldn't they? But yeah, that feels all right. The weight, it's, it's light, but so is the loco. So the coaches can't weigh a ton, can they? Otherwise, it wouldn't haul many of them. All right, one more coach then. Similar to the first, I think. Very similar, except this one's got a different running number. Yeah, reasonably impressed with those. I think to say you get three of these in the set, that's not bad at all. All right, cool stuff. So, boring bits, controller. Don't particularly like these controllers. They are the same as the 00 controllers, so I don't need to talk too much about that. You've also got the standard power supply for that controller as well. We've got an accessories bag here with a re-railer, or a railer inside it and a miniature version of the double O buffer stop designed for TT. That's pretty cool, so you can put that at the end of your siding. I did not notice this before. There is another accessories bag for the Loco, and inside we've got cylinder drain cocks, we've got some painted vacuum pipes for the buffer beam, and there is even a screw link coupling inside there for the Loco's front coupling hook. Really, really nice features. The coupling is not articulated or anything, it's just a moulded plastic piece, but it would certainly look good if fitted. So yeah, I'm quite impressed at the detail they've managed to squeeze into this. Um, let's have a look at the track we get then. So here are the straights. We've got a set of points. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straights. One of those is a power track. 
If you want to see more on the track, check out my last video, which is about building a TT layout. And then we've got a load of curves inside here. I think most of these are for the third radius oval that you get. Although I think this one slightly broader curve on top here, that must be for correcting the point. So yeah, you've got the track. The track's okay as well. Yeah, it's decent quality track. I've already used some of that. And here we go. This is what I'm interested in. <laughs> Never normally, but today I am. The instructions. Let's find out more about the loco. And anything else this has to tell me. All right. Class A1, A3, A4. So that suggests they have the same chassis, or at least a very similar one. All right, let's open her up. Okay, lubrication. So this looks very similar to 00. It shows the axles and the three crank pins to lubricate. Accessories, yeah, you can see we can fit cylinder drain cocks if you want to. You've got the buffer beam accessories as well. Assembly, connecting the loco and the tender, works exactly the same as 00. I'm surprised they've gone with the wired connector and not some sort of plug and play direct connector. That's unfortunate, I think. This would have been a good opportunity to do away with that, like they're starting to in 00. Locomotive body removal, ah, we've got a bit on the mechanism here. Got one of those little motors there, it looks like the same sort of thing that's in the Peckett. We'll have a look later on and figure that out for sure. And the decoder socket is inside the tender, so remove the tender body, you've got access to that. And it is indeed a Next 18 pin decoder socket, so that's fairly good and modern. You've got a good choice of decoder that you can put in there. And then on the back, nothing much to see. Uh, is there anything? Oh no, I don't care about the controller. Uh, so yeah, that is all. So, I think we'll go straight in for a close look at that gorgeous A4, and let's see what sort of detail they've managed to achieve with it. So here's a little bit of a scale comparison for you. At the back there we have the Hornby 00 scale A4, and obviously down in the foreground we have the TT scale A4. Yeah, the difference in size is quite dramatic, I think. The TT A4 weighs 150 grams, and the 00 scale A4 weighs 397 grams, which is around two and a half times more than the TT A4. But the decrease in weight of the TT A4 is actually roughly proportional to the reduction in scale. So in terms of weight, very, very similar to the 00 A4, taking the scale into account. So there you have it, a close look at the all-new TT Scale A4 from Hornby. And I think this is great. It is absolutely gorgeous looking, isn't it? It's actually surprising how similar this is in detail to the 00 Scale A4 from Hornby, despite the much smaller size. I'm also very impressed with how well Hornby have taken to this new scale, because obviously they have produced almost exclusively 00 Scale models for years and years, and changing scale like this kind of changes everything, doesn't it? And yet, the design, the quality, the detail, it's all here straight away, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. So, let's delve in. I know you're desperate to see this up close, so let's have a much closer look at this loco. Decoration and finish. I actually think the finish on this is better than the 00 scale A4. It has that quality satin sheen that some of their latest 00 locos have had, which suggests, again, that they are intending these TT models to be quite premium, which is great. The decoration is good as well. The lining is really, really good. It looks perhaps a little bit untidy up close, but bear in mind this is at a much, much smaller scale than usual. Viewing this normally, it looks very, very good and crisp. Can't really fault the lining, to be honest. You've got all of that lining on the side of the cab as well as the running number and the little builder's plate there is a really, really impressive little print. That looks fantastic. We've also got the separately fitted nameplate. I don't know if that is etched. It looks to me like it might be a plastic piece with a tampo print on it, but uh, the print quality is pretty good, I would say. And if we look at the streamlined end, you can see we've got the running number on the board there. And again, the quality finish is particularly noticeable here as well. Let's take a look at some of the details then. We've still got separately fitted wire handrails on the Loco. These are not just a part of the molding. They are indeed separately fitted, which is great. You have got separately fitted rods, reverser rods and such. These are made of metal. Again, I was kind of expecting this sort of thing to be a part of the molding, but it is not, which is very impressive. 
The molded detail is pretty good though, as you can see we've got great axle box detail underneath the rear trailing wheel, which does not really seem to turn, it kind of is touching the track, kind of not, but that big power connector wire is actually touching those rear wheels and stopping them from turning. So yeah, the rear wheel design is about as good as on Hornby's 00 Locos as well. The side of the cab has more separately fitted handrails. It does have glazing fitted to it. And yeah, sure enough, the tiny, tiny safety valves here do appear to be made of metal, which is a great quality touch. Incredibly, the same seems to be true of the whistle as well. That's such a fine little piece, but it is separately fitted. In terms of the cab, the top of the cab has these open vents. These are not poseable like they are on the 00 model, though they are fixed in place, which I think is fair enough. We do, however, have cab doors pre-fitted. A tender full plate is fitted as well, and the cab detail is very, very good. It is easily on par with some 00 models. The gauges and such haven't been painted, but when you really see how tiny they are, that's not much of a surprise. Yeah, so a really, really decent cab, actually. The buffer beam has the tiny little coupling hook pre-fitted. You could put a coupling on there because one was provided. The buffers are separately fitted and metal, which is good to see, but they are not sprung. I think sprung buffer fans might be disappointed in TT. Maybe it's possible, maybe we'll see it in the future, but this loco does not have it. The wheels and the coupling and connecting rods are not too bad either. The one noticeable thing for me is that the axles are very noticeable and shiny. I think they would have looked a lot better if they'd been painted over. The coupling rods and the crank pins though, all of this stuff isn't too bad. It doesn't look too chunky looking. It is a little bit chunkier than it should be. Those crank pins are 0.2 millimeters wider in diameter than they should be compared with double O and the coupling rods are a little bit thicker but not by much by 0.1 millimeter they look a tiny bit chunky but overall they don't look too bad at all i actually think they look quite convincing and when they get going i'm sure they'll look even better in terms of construction it is just a plastic body on this one it's got a good finish to it and the weight isn't bad but there is no die cast on the body here the tender then is particularly impressive as you can see, great decoration, good finish on that as well. The British Railways crest actually looks as good as in double O, if you ask me. Yeah, very, very nice. Great bit of lining. The underframe detail is good too. You've got all of the riveting on display there. Axle boxes, springs, all looks good. Nice metal wheels as well. The coal load is good and realistic too. Yeah, I think there's a decent bit of texture on there. Nice water filler, all that looks good. Around the back, you've got the corridor coach connector, which is surrounded by separately fitted handrails and such. And also here's our first look at the TT coupling. Very limited instructional material came with this set, so I'm not actually sure how to go about using these couplings, so I'll have to give that a try in a little while. But overall, I'm quite impressed. To answer my question earlier, how does this hold up to double O models? Well, apart from in the size, very, very well indeed. You're not losing out on very much in the way of detail at all by buying an A4 from the TT range and not the double O range. Not necessarily what I was expecting. The quality is high, there's no glue visible or anything like that. And in some ways the quality is even better in TT because of the improved quality of the finish. So you can colour me quite impressed with this. Before we go and get this running though, let's take a closer look at one of the coaches. So there you have it, we have the Mark 1 brake up close and personal, and at this scale, yeah, the detail does look good. I would say it's not quite as high as on the Loco, the level of detail here seems more akin to a sort of mid-range coach in double O scale, and that's largely because more of the detail here is just a part of the moulding, which makes perfect sense, uh, as I said earlier on, to separately fit some of this stuff would have made it look chunky and worse in my opinion, but it does make the coach a little bit simpler. However, as you can see, the decoration and the quality of the finish seems absolutely fine. All of the lining and the printing looks pretty good. You've got the running number on there and the various little printed bits of text. Very, very fine and good quality. The molding is very good on the door handles. Clearly they are not separately fitted, but they do look good. So some effort has been put into the molds here. Same with the grab rails around the doors. They do look very convincing. They've been accurately painted and very finely molded as well. 
The glazing looks quite good. Yeah, separate glazing and the window frames have been molded and then printed onto those glazing pieces. So yeah, I think they look okay. The bogies look great. Yeah, the molded detail on these is fantastic. I would say it looks as good as in double O scale and hopefully the close-ups will do that justice. The underframes are relatively well detailed as well. Very, very similar to that of some of Hornby's double O coaches. Maybe not brand new modern ones, but not far off, I would say. And the interior is not bad either. You can clearly see a corridor there and you've got the seating as well. None of this painted, again, very, very similar to Hornby's double O coaches. The roof is separately painted and it's got your sort of standard Mark 1 roof furniture, nothing too crazy going on here. All part of the moulding but all looks fine. And then around the ends, again most of the detail here is just moulded on but it looks fine. All of these toolings are brand new so all of the detail looks nice and sharp. Little fine buffers on there, not sprung once again but they do look fine. You've got the couplings once again, these are the same type as on the tender of the A4. These are kinematic though, if I show you the underside. Yeah, they're free to move around. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. It's probably more than I was expecting from a TT coach, which is quite impressive. Now though, let's go back to the A4. Let's get it down onto the track. Let's see how it performs. And I'm really interested to see what sort of mechanism it's gonna have. The TT layout has returned to the loft and William, the A4, is down onto the track and the first performance test has already been filmed. And I'm gonna try not to give anything about that away until you see it for yourself. After that, I went on and took a closer look at the mechanism and that is what I wanna talk about next. So, reveal time, the mechanism is really good. As well as the loco driving wheels having pickups, every single one of the tender wheels have pickups as well. That is a lot of pickups for such a small locomotive. That is seven per line. That should ensure perfect conductivity with the track. They are still using the same connector as double O though, which is a very odd decision. Obviously it looks bad in double O, it's quite inconvenient in double O, the disadvantages here in TT are amplified. It looks massive, it's very ungainly, and the wire does indeed foul that rear pony axle on the loco, which stops it turning properly. I think this is an area where they really should have innovated. The base keeper plate though is a great design. Three screws and it is removable. As you can see, it's got spring-loaded contacts, just like in double O, that is fantastic for serviceability. You've got a single driven axle, so it's not over-engineered or over-complicated, and there are proper bearings on the driving axles. You can colour me very, very impressed by that. I wasn't sure if they were gonna do it, but they have, that is really, really good. Now, in terms of the body removal, mixed results. The instructions did mention how to undo all of the screws and such, but they completely failed to mention the speedo assembly, which is connected to the body. And if you aren't aware of that, you could pull it off and damage the loco chassis or the connecting rods. Why was that not mentioned in the instructions? Anyway, I didn't have a nut spinner that would fit that nut, so I popped the speedo assembly off the body to glue back on later on so I could take a look at the chassis. And the chassis is die cast and it is shaped to the body of the A4, which is the secret to its weight really, yeah, that's how this loco could be so heavy. Under the cover there is this, it's just a three pole motor, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, uh, obviously a big chunky five pole motor is probably out of the question. It also has no flywheel on it. I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't opt for a cordless motor, generally they do offer the best performance in my opinion, but this is the same sort of motor that Hornby have used in their packets in the past with great results. I mean, this is a decent motor for its size, I would say. There's also a lot of gearing here. You've got the worm to the first gear, which is a big step down. Then you've got a tiny gear, which goes to a much larger gear, which gears the speed down again. So that suggests that they are really working hard to try and keep this loco speed down. And then in terms of the gauge, it is 10.1 to 10.2 back to back. I don't have anything to compare this with yet, but I can say that it's relatively consistent. So for a little thing that is sort of the size of my hand, 
I think the quality of the mechanism here is really top notch. The design is pretty nice, it's reasonably serviceable, and the quality of the components seems to be reasonably high as well. So with that, let's jump back and I will show you what happened during that performance test. Right, big moment then. I am going to run a TT locomotive for the first time. To control this loco, I've got a Gauge Master controller because I really want to do this performance test in the same way that I would do a double O gauge performance test. So using a Gauge Master controller should produce the most consistent results. So with that, I'm not sure what direction is which, so we'll find out. Let's ask the question, does this loco work? Let's give it some juice and see. Here we go. Yeah, it certainly does. Off it goes. I should say at this point it has not yet been running, so this is literally just the out-of-the-box performance. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad at the moment. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see what the speed's like. Let's back it right up and I'll run it past at 50% speed. Quite speedy, I would say. Yeah, so the gearing is interesting, but... You know, if it's got control at the low end, that will not be uh, too bad. Let's see about that then. Has it got much of a crawl at this point? Let's give it a go. Ready? Forwards. Let's see. I'm just going to ease it up very, very gently. Oh, a bit slower. I tell you what, that's not bad. That's actually better than I was expecting this to be. I think it's kind of stopped up now a little bit. But yeah, overall, that's not bad. To say it's not been running, I'm quite impressed with that. So straight away, the performance isn't a million miles away from what you'd expect in 00. I think the 00A4s maybe can crawl a bit better than this, but I don't want to say too much of that sort of thing yet because it hasn't been run in. But yeah, that's actually very, very lovely. Can't fault that. Okay. So I think it's time to run this in then. Let's get it going. Let's see how it handles the curves. I might send it over some points as well just to see how that goes. Uh, yeah, should be interesting. Let's give it a try. Okay, she's off. And if anything, yeah, I would say quite fast. This is quite speedy. I think if this was at double O scale and it ran like this at 50, I would say, wow, that looks way too fast. I'm not going to complain too much about that though because of course it can still crawl or at least it could when it came out of the box so we'll see how this is after it's run in so far the performance isn't too bad at all obviously there isn't going to be room for quite the same quality mechanism that there is in double o but as you know they achieve it in n scale so it shouldn't be as difficult as n scale to do it in tt and it's not bad no it's not bad at all so I'll let this run for 30 minutes forwards, 30 minutes backwards, and then we will return and I'll couple it up to some coaches. We'll see how the couplings work and see what it's like hauling a train. Okay, let's just briefly try it over some points then. So I'm going to stop it just ahead of those, change the direction. Let's open up the points and I'm going to go quite steady. Let's just back through them and see if it stays on the track basically. Second radius curves, yeah, okay. Let's try forwards a bit faster. Yeah, points absolutely fine. They're quite good wide broad points as well, which is good. Let's see how it gets on on the second radius. Yeah, I would say that seems pretty good. Doesn't seem to be struggling at all. No noticeable slowing down on the second radius. It does beg the question how tight a radius this loco can manage before it starts to slow down or derail but second and third definitely okay okay folks that is running in complete and yeah that was fine it's very very stable on the track you might think that there would be some unreliability at this sort of scale but no it's perfect it's fine very stable on the track never derails never even slowed down very very pleased with that the tractive effort is 0.1 newtons, which I think should enable this to haul roughly 25 coaches on straight and level track. I don't think that's bad going. Uh, obviously, I can't test that at the moment, but the pulling power seems pretty good. And bear in mind, there are no traction tyres on this locomotive. 
some of the early samples that the magazines got did clearly show traction tyres, but I'm glad to see that they actually decided the tyres were not necessary and those were not fitted. I've also got the coaches on the inside line waiting to be coupled up to, so we'll go and do that on camera in just a moment and we'll talk about the couplings. For now though, how is the performance? Has it changed at all uh, during the running in period? So does it still work nicely? Yeah, still really nice and smooth. You can tell there is no flywheel though because at least on analog the control is very sort of immediate. You don't get any gradual acceleration or anything, uh, or deceleration indeed. But let's see if the crawl's any better now. Uh, obviously the gearing, despite Hornby's best efforts, does mean that the Loco runs fast. Yeah, it's just a fast runner. So I don't think there's a lot of power down at the low end, but let's try it. Let's see, see about a crawl. Oh, a bit more. Yeah, so it's a little bit coggy. It is struggling a little bit. Um, yeah, not a smooth motion. But again, I don't really know how much to ask of these logos um, at this sort of scale. Uh, I've noticed the front bogey wheels are not turning properly. Let's have a look at that. Oh, it's going now. Yeah, not a lot of weight on that front bogey then. Let's just double check. Right, is that any better? Yeah, that seems a little better. That might have just been me putting that back on then. Um, depends whether that was happening before the disassembly, but I don't know. Right, let's try crawl in reverse. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, it's better in reverse. Wow. That's really solid. Yeah, it's much smoother. Right forwards again. Yeah, definitely more stuttery in the forwards direction. But again, I don't think it's bad really. And if I turn it up a bit, it becomes nice and smooth. So yes, it runs very, very fast at medium speed. But there does seem to be some fair talk there at this sort of speed. So I don't know, you can still get a relatively realistic performance out of it, I would say. I wonder what the torque is like at that speed. Let's put my fingers there. Slows down quite a lot, but it's still able to turn its wheels. So, yeah, there's, there's a fair bit of torque in the mechanism, actually, which actually puts some double O locos to shame. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Right. Let's go around then, and let's try and couple up to those coaches. And for that, I'm going to have to background. All right. So the coaches are nice and free rolling. That was very noticeable. And they also couple together very well too. Just push them together and they couple. Let's see if the loco is the same. Let's try and do this steadily. Now, has that coupled? That was just a gentle nudge. All of the coaches moved. Yeah, they have coupled. And obviously the coaches right now are on the second radius curves. And they are handling them fine. Let's see how they get on across the points. A bit faster. Let's make it a real test. Yeah, look at that. Absolutely brilliant. I suppose while the camera's here, let's try going back over them. Just trying to get a sense of the stability of all this stuff. Marvellous. Can't say fairer than that, can you, really? It works incredibly well. I thought this would be really fiddly and finicky, but it's not. It's really impressive. Right, let's go back down to track level and let's talk about the couplings. So as I understand it, the couplings here are a kind of European standard or possibly even a world standard for TT scale, but I'm not familiar with it. And there was nothing that came with this set to actually explain how the couplings were supposed to work. So I've kind of had to figure it out by myself. So I'm going to demonstrate how you uncouple these things. If you know of a better way to do this or if I'm not doing it in the proper way, please do comment down below and let me know. Basically, I found that if you push up whatever's underneath here, the couplings will disengage. So I'm just using a flat bladed screwdriver. Any sort of tool should really do. Uh, let me see if I can do it from behind and uh, hopefully then you'll be able to see a bit more of what's going on. So if I push these up, pull the logo forward. There we go. <laughs> Managed to get those apart. Let me try and use a different, slightly wider implement, and I'll try and give you a closer look. Right. 
I'll be interested to see this footage, frankly. Here we go then. Oh, wrong way. Let's see how these couple. There we are. So hopefully, I hope you can get a sense there of how they sort of work. And I think that if I sort of push these bottom bits up like that, that the coupling should disengage. Let's try that again. Oh, that was much better. There you go, old, flash, old fashioned glue spreader. Absolutely perfect for that, very nice. One more time then, let's see if we can get that. I think that's it. One of them's in, <laughs> one of them's not. So yeah, you can't couple too gently, otherwise they don't sort of grab each other. But yeah, you don't need too much force either. And then release. I think that should do it. Those two arms raise up in the air to show that it's worked and then you can drive away. That's nice. That's very, very, very small and a lot more subtle looking than in double O. I like it. Right, let's go haul these coaches, see how it gets on. So I would say that this is a bit more of a sensible speed, perhaps a little bit on the slow side, if anything, but it just gives you a nice opportunity to see the smoothness of the loco and take in some of the details as it runs past. Oh, it's wonderful how well this works. Yeah, I mean, I saw it working well at the exhibition, but you think, oh, well, of course they're gonna have it working well there. But for me to take this out of its box, just set it up at home and have it work perfectly as it is doing, that gives me a lot more confidence than just seeing it at the exhibition. Uh, the coach is perfectly reliable on third and second radius curves, forwards and backwards across the points. Everything stays coupled and it all just works very nicely. I don't know how impressive the Loco's performance is. Uh, maybe I was expecting it to perform slightly better at the low speeds and it is very, very quick, don't get me wrong. But at this sort of speed, it looks perfectly fine. I think it's maintaining its speed. So really, there's not that much to complain about there either. No, I think for 165 pounds, that's what I paid, or even 195, I think you get your money's worth, folks. It's not dirt cheap or anything, but it is cheaper than double O, and you get largely the same. You get the same sort of detail, maybe slightly less, you get the same sort of performance, maybe slightly less, but you also get the benefits too. You get the benefits in terms of the size and convenience, and you also get the extra accuracy of the TT track actually matching the scale of the models. So I'm quite excited. I'm eager to see more. I think I definitely need to try more TT models from Hornby and possibly from other manufacturers as well. And then I'll have a better idea of what's possible, what's good, what's bad, what's impressive and what's not. But as an isolated experience, I have to say I'm impressed by this. The models are very, very nice indeed. And I'm quite impressed by how much they've managed to cram onto them. So for me, it's a thumbs up. Let's have some ratings then for the brand new TT Easterner set from Hornby. I want to start with a little bit of a disclaimer because usually when I give these ratings, I am drawing on masses of experience from hundreds of different locos in double O scale. Here though, I have nothing really to compare this with. That will change as time goes on and I review more TT gauge products, but at the moment it's got to be more opinion rather than objective comparison between this and other models in TT. So do take these with a pinch of salt. The level of detail for me though is 4.5. I don't know whether this is generous or harsh, but I think the decoration and the livery is objectively fantastic. The finish is really, really good. Love the paintwork. The cab detail for the size of it is really impressive. You've got loads of separate parts, particularly on the locomotive, not so much on the coaches, such as the whistle, the safety valves, etc., etc. I do think the axles would have looked better if they were painted over, or perhaps if the entire wheel was fully molded, maybe. Uh, sprung buffers don't have sprung buffers. That's not a serious complaint. I know that's probably not practical at this scale but I'm just trying to imagine what other TT Locos might have in the future. But yeah, the level of detail has impressed me. Performance, three and a half. Again, I don't know whether this is harsh. Maybe Locos are not going to perform as well as double O here in TT. 
Having said that, it is nice and smooth and controlled. It's got plenty of torque. It doesn't derail or struggle around curves. It seems to take tighter curves okay as well. It is just very, very fast. There has clearly been an attempt to gear down the speed of the motor. There's a lot of gearing in this, but it still runs extremely fast and the torque at the slow speeds is not great. It can't really crawl. So it loses a little bit for that. The performance, again, at the size though, I don't think is bad. The pulling power, 0.1 newtons or 25 coaches. I'm taking that projection by extrapolating my 00 scale data. So again, I'll be able to make this more accurate as time goes on and I've tried more locos, but I don't think that's too bad at all. Seven, eight coaches, it's gonna do this very, very easily. That I'm pretty sure of. The mechanism is good. I'm gonna give it four star. It's really nice and serviceable, which I was surprised by. Quite good access to it. You've got loads of pickups, including tender pickups proper base keeper plate that's removable with spring-loaded contacts, great for servicing. You've got proper bearings on the driving wheels. You've got a nice die-cast chassis. The motor is not a five-pole motor, so it loses a star for that. No flywheel here or anything, but they do seem to be decent motors, if very speedy ones. Value for money then, I have to say for £194.49, that's the RRP, or the TT Club price of £165, again with nothing to compare it with, this seems fantastic. These Locos on their own sell for £145.99, that's the full price, and the Coaches are £32.49. Now, do I think the, the Loco and the Coaches are necessarily worth all that? Not really, but if you add just the three Coaches and the Locos value together, that comes to £243.46, which is some £50 more expensive than the entire set, which comes with track, controller, few accessories, that's not bad value, is it? I don't think that's bad at all. They're effectively giving you £50 to buy the set and have the track for free. It's really a good value way to go. I'm perfectly happy. I think the quality is good. I think everything looks great. For £165 that I paid, I am really, really happy. So overall, that is 8.26 out of 10, or a grade B. I'm pleasantly surprised this is better than I expected it to be. I think there may well be a future in this scale yet. Let's put it into a new logbook then. We're starting afresh with a TT logbook. It is in top place now, but is it gonna stay there or will it be beaten? Well, only time will tell. There we go, running a little bit faster now to finish off with. That's still 40 speed, not going half power there. But uh, yeah, I think that's a little bit more reasonable. Yeah, I love this thing. Yeah, this is very, very good. I will certainly be trying more TT. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully Hornby will get better and better at it. Although, as one of the very first releases, I don't think this is a bad start at all. I had fun with this. It is fun to use. It's satisfying, just like Double O. So this is a viable option for those of you who don't have enough space for Double O. Obviously, the choice of Loco and Rolling Stock is quite limited at the moment. There's obviously a lot more in Double O scale from a lot more different manufacturers. But it's all about small baby steps to get started and Hornby have taken those steps quite well in my opinion. So thank you so much for watching. Please do comment down below. What do you think of this TT set? What impresses you about it? What are the drawbacks if any? Please do let me know what you think. But for now, I will finish off this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you very, very soon for some more reviews. Maybe some of them will be TT. All right, cheers folks, take care.